Among the many interesting pieces of work that Leon Festinger produced, When Prophecy Fails, is an especially intriguing one. In it, they studied an apocalyptic cult. And this cult predicted, who would have thought, the apocalypse. And the apocalypse didn't take place, who would have thought. But the very interesting part is that the cult actually didn't dissolve afterwards. They didn't say, okay, maybe we were wrong. Instead, they strengthened their beliefs. The cult became more intertwined and stronger. Why is it this way? And why might this actually be quite helpful to know for your personal life? Well, firstly, every cult member had a very strong conviction, a strong belief in the apocalypse. So it is quite difficult to change it from the beginning. Secondly, they made actions that were quite irreversible. Once you publicly declare that you believe in the apocalypse that is coming within a week or something, it becomes quite difficult to take that back. Generally, all actions that are difficult to take back make you ingrain a specific belief even more because you committed to it. You can't quite back out. It's not that easy. We don't want to admit that we are wrong. Thirdly, what happened? The apocalypse didn't actually take place and the cult members realized it. So it is important that they are actually disproved and that these members realize, hey, it didn't take place. But lastly, they also had a social net. And this social construct then created a new story, which was, hey, we prevented the apocalypse because we prayed and did this and did that. So we saved everyone. Why did they do this? Because it's easier to adopt this new belief that you saved everyone than it is to admit to all your friends, hey, I was wrong, I predicted an apocalypse and nothing happened, nothing at all. This is not a pleasant realization. So instead of backing out, you actually buy in even further. And exactly this concept can be quite challenging in our personal lives because we also encounter similar situations. Yes, it might not be as harsh as buying into an apocalyptic cult, but maybe you believe in a conspiracy theory. Maybe you made a decision to commit to a specific belief set and eventually it didn't turn out properly. Maybe you just pursue a specific diet and there's an overwhelming amount of evidence proving your diet to be inferior to other diet forms. The easy thing, or rather the difficult thing from a personal level, would be to change your diet form, to say, okay, I was wrong, I do a different diet. The mentally easier thing to do is actually to say, okay, there might be overwhelming evidence against it, but maybe these studies weren't conducted properly. Maybe I still just feel very good with my diet form. Maybe there's another reason that just helps me to ensure that I am on the right path. I don't really want to back out. Obviously, this is an unconscious process. You don't really delude yourself and are conscious of it. It's always an unconscious process in which you lie to yourself a little bit more. And with each successive lie, you buy into that belief set a little bit more. And eventually, it's just impossible to back out. Just think about what all your friends would say and all your family would say if you said, I was wrong for the last five or ten years. Maybe they would laugh but probably not. Think about what happens when a cult member quits. Do their families turn their back? Do their friends turn their back? No, they welcome them back home for admitting that they were wrong. They are happy to have these people back. They are happy that they left the cult. And this is the same thing with every other belief system that we have. We might not want to change it because it's difficult and we might feel embarrassed to admit that we were wrong. But it's, but it's actually the right thing to do because it allows us to open up for new opportunities and to actually learn and improve. That being said, be sure to not fall into a deep pit of continuously buying into something just because you bought into it previously. That's it for the video. Thanks a lot to Elyse, David Rose, Robert Kempf and Gerald Jones II for supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it. And maybe we will launch a Discord server throughout the next weeks. So stay tuned for that.